So as always, we'll play this in a nice simple ballad style, so you can hear the chord progression, and I'll create a really simple, pretty little improvised line. I'm going to do it in the key of E flat. G'day viewers, I'm Tim. And I'm Don. And together, we are My Aim, the Improvised Line, and an elevated method. Welcome to our channel, guys. We're all about playing music, improvisation, and the cycle of movable things. <laughs> so today is the ninth lesson in this series of videos on improvisation for beginners, or improv for beginners as we've called it. Today we're looking at the 1, 4, 5, 7 chord progression and where the example is written in the key of E flat. This is important because in the next two lessons we're going to be looking at how the E flat key signature is related to the C major key signature. So I've been looking at the tonic minor and then the week after we'll have a look at the relative minor. So stay tuned over the next two weeks for those two coming videos. So we're looking at the 1, 4, 5, 7 chord progression today and as always we'll play it in the key of C because that's your reference for every single video we've done in this series. You can hear the pitch how it sounds differently in each of the chord progressions that we've had a look at. So one, four, five, seven. So as a keyboard player, I always like to look at things on the cycle of keys. And as we can see here, the one, four, five, seven keys are highlighted. The first thing you notice is we've got three together there. Five, one and four, or G, C and F. So that'll give us these three major chords. And because of their positioning on the side of the keys, you can straight, see straight away that there are two dominants and two tonics. Because the G always goes to C, and the C always goes to F. When we're looking at these chords also, you'll see a lot of common notes, and that helps you when you're creating the improvised line so you can play one note against two or three different chords and helps you with your chord progression as well. They're nice and close together, common notes everywhere. So on the C chord you've got C, E, G and then a major seventh. Love the major seventh. The F chord, F, A, C, add the E, also a major seventh. G, B, D for the G chord and then add F for the dominant 7th and then B, D, F for the diminished with an A is a half diminished 7th chord and the A flat is the diminished tetrachord, the most flexible chord in music and we're going to be exploring a lot more about that in future videos. So as always, we'll play this in a nice simple ballad style, so you can hear the chord progression and I'll create a really simple, pretty little improvised line. I'm going to do it in the key of E flat, so the chords will be E flat, A flat, B flat and D diminished.
Nice 16 bars finishing there on the low Korean cadence. So when we're looking at this 1, 4, 5, 7 chord progression, you can finish it on the 7th chord, which would make it an imperfect low Korean cadence. Because at my aim, we just use the two terms, perfect and imperfect cadences. A perfect cadence finishes on the tonic chord, and an imperfect cadence finishes on any other chord of the scale. It just keeps things really simple, and so it's filling your head up with a whole lot of ambiguous terminology. You'll notice too that the low green cadence, like all imperfect cadences, doesn't quite sound finished and it leaves the listener begging for it to go on a little bit further. So you can finish your improvisation on the seventh chord or you can resolve it back to the tonic if you like. So if we do a one, in this case we'll do it in the key of C so it's easy for you to listen to and watch. One, four, five, seven. And you're listening for that next chord. Or you can finish it back to the tonic if you like. One, C and then you can hear the chord progression. Have a listen to this neat little bass line. We're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. line is occurring on the first and third beats so it's one two three four five six seven eight and one nice little variation there and of course the chord is going to go on beats two and four of each bar so let's try and put it together the bass and when you get to the B and you're ready to change back and say now I'm going to add the chords on it. Most bass lines use the first and fifth notes of the chord and occur on the first and third beats of each bar. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In this chord progression we're changing from the first chord to the fourth chord. So what's a nice bass line we can do to change that? Is if we use some auxiliary notes to work our way down to the F. So we're going from C to G for the C chord and then it'll be C and F for the F chord. But if we do our little auxiliary notes and we put them in on the eighth count of the second measure, we'll get this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and one. So we're going five, flat five, and then to the tonic note of the next chord on the first beat of the third bar. Now we've got to go from F up to G. So, a similar thing, we're going to use the F again, to F sharp and then up to G. So it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and. And then we're on G, which is the tonic note of the next chord. And of course G and D are the first and fifth notes of the G scale. 
going to go to the seventh chord, which is the B diminished. So to get to there, we're going to want to end up on the tonic note of B. So we're going to go A, A sharp or B flat to B. So we want using B and F, because they're the first and fifth notes of the B scale. So how do we get to C from there? B flat, B, C. Nice and simple. Two little simple auxiliary notes as eighth notes on the eighth beat of the second measure. It creates a really fun country style bass line. the chords in on the second and fourth beats of each bar. So, uh, and we're talking about improvisation because that's what we do here at My Aim. It's important to have a bit of fun, play around with it, perhaps change the order of the chords and of course you use the different values of chords that are available to you. There's a whole range of them and we've done other videos about that and you can check those ones out. So when we're looking at this one we're going from 1, 4, 5 and 7. As we've mentioned earlier, we'll look at the common notes that are found in each of the chords. So when we're looking at the seventh, which is the diminished chord, the diminished is the most flexible chord we have in music, and this is a really good example as to why. So we're playing it's B, D, F, and then A for the half diminished, or A flat for the full diminished seventh. If we just play the F, A flat and B with the B bass you'll hear diminished. If we play those same notes with an F bass it becomes the F minor. So that's why the diminished is such a flexible chord. Play around with it heaps. Put a D bass in it. B bass. F bass. A flat bass and all the different sounds are coming out and I'm just using the same three notes in the right hand. So let's finish with a little bit of, bit of jazz and we'll play around with the chords, perhaps put them in a different order and, and have a little bit of fun. See ya!